Rose White and Rose Red A poor widow once lived in a little cottage with a garden in front of it, in which grew two rose trees, one bearing white roses and the other red. She had two children, who were just like the two rose trees. One was called Rose White and the other Rose Red, and they were the sweetest and best children in all the world, always diligent and hard-working and always cheerful. But Rose White was quieter and more gentle than Rose Red. Rose Red loved to run about the fields and meadows and to pick flowers and catch butterflies. But Rose White sat at home with her mother and helped her in the household, or read aloud to her when there was no work to do. The two children loved each other so dearly that they always walked about hand in hand whenever they went out together. And when Rose White said, We will never desert or leave each other, Rose Red answered, No, not as long as we live. And the mother added, Whatever one gets, she shall share with the other. They often roamed about in the woods gathering berries, and no beast wanted to hurt them, but only came up to them in the most friendly way. The little rabbit would eat a cabbage leaf from their hands. The deer grazed the grass beside them. The stag would leap past them happily, and the birds remained on the branches and sang to them with all their might. No evil ever happened to them. If they stayed late in the woods and night overtook them, they lay together on the moss and slept till morning, and their mother knew they were quite safe, and never felt anxious or worried about them. Once, when they had slept all night in the wood and had been wakened by the morning sun, they perceived a beautiful child in a shining white gown sitting close to their resting place. The figure got up, looked at them kindly but said nothing, and vanished into the wood. And when they looked around them, they became aware that they had slept quite close to a precipice, a cliff. And the mother added, Whatever one gets, she shall share with the other. They often roamed about in the woods, over which they would certainly have fallen had they gone a few steps further in the darkness. And when they told their mother of their adventure, she said what they seen must have been the angel that guards good children. Rose White and Rose Red kept their mother's cottage so beautifully clean and neat that it was a pleasure to go into it. In summer, Rose Red looked after the house, and every morning before her mother awoke, she placed a bunch of flowers in front of the bed, roses from each tree. In winter, Rose White lit the fire and put on a kettle, which was made of brass, but so beautifully polished that it shone like gold. In the evening, when the snowflakes fell, their mother said, Rose White, go and close the shutters. And they drew round the fire, while their mother put on her spectacles, that is, her glasses, and read aloud from a big book, and the two girls listened and sat and knitted stockings and mittens. Beside them on the ground lay a little lamb, and behind them perched a little white dove with its head tucked under its wings. One evening, as they sat cozily together, someone knocked at the door as though he wanted to come in. The mother said, Rose Red, open the door quickly. It must be some traveler seeking shelter so he can spend the night safely. Rose Red hurried to unlock the door and thought she saw a poor man standing in the darkness outside, only it was no such thing but a bear who poked his thick black head through the door. Rose Red screamed aloud and jumped back in terror. The lamb began to bleat, the dove flapped its wings, and Rose White ran and hid behind her mother's bed. But the bear began to speak and said, Don't be afraid. I won't hurt you. I am half frozen and only wish to warm myself a little. My poor bear, said the mother, lie down by the fire. Only take care you don't burn your fur. Then she called out, Rose White and Rose Red, come out. The bear will do you no harm. He is a good, honest creature. One evening, as they sat cozily together, someone knocked at the door as though he wanted to come in. The so they both came out of their hiding places, and gradually the lamb and dove drew near too, and they all forgot their fear. The bear asked the children to beat the snow a little out of his fur, and they fetched a brush and scrubbed him till he was dry. Then the beast stretched himself in front of the fire and growled quite happily and comfortably. The children soon grew quite at ease with their guest and became quite rambunctious. They tugged his fur with their hands, put their small feet on his back, and rolled him about here and there, or took a hazel wand and beat him with it, and if he growled, they only laughed. 
The bear submitted to everything with the best possible good nature. Only when they went too far, he cried out, Oh, children, spare my life. Rose white and rose red, don't beat your loved one dead. When it was time to go to sleep and the others went to bed, the mother said to the bear, You can lie here on the hearth in front of the fire. It will be shelter for you from the cold and wet. So they both came out of their hiding places, and gradually the lamb and dove drew near too, and they all forgot their fear. As soon as day dawned, the children let him out, and he trotted over the snow into the wood. From this time on, the bear came every evening at the same hour, and lay down by the hearth and let the children play what pranks they liked with him. And they got so accustomed to him that the door was never shut till their furry friend had made his appearance. When spring came, and all the bushes and trees and grass were green, the bear said one morning to Rose White, Now I must go away and not return again the whole summer. Where are you going to, dear bear? asked Rose White. I must go to the wood and protect my treasure from the wicked dwarfs. In winter, when the earth is frozen hard, they are obliged to remain underground, for they can't dig their way through the hard dirt. But now, when the sun has thawed and warmed the ground, they break through and come up above to spy all over the land and steal what they can. What once falls into their hands and into their caves is not easily brought back above ground where it belongs. As soon as day dawned, the children let him out, and he trotted over the snow into the wood. From this time on, the bear came every evening at the same hour and lay down by the hearth and let the children play what pranks. Rose White was quite sad over their friend's departure, and when she unbarred the door for him, the bear, stepping out, caught a piece of his fur in the door knocker and Rose White thought she caught sight of glittering gold beneath his fur, but she couldn't be certain of it, and the bear hurried away and soon disappeared behind the trees. A short time after this, the mother sent the children into the wood to collect sticks for the fire. In their wanderings, they came upon a big tree which lay felled on the ground, and on the trunk among the long grass, they noticed something jumping up and down, but what it was they couldn't distinguish or figure out. When they approached near, they perceived a dwarf with a wrinkled face and a beard that stretched down to his toes. The tip end of the beard was jammed into a cracked place where the tree had broken open, and the little man jumped about like a dog on a chain and didn't seem to know what to do. Rose White was quite sad over their friend's departure, and he glared angrily at the girls with his fiery red eyes and screamed out, what are you standing there for? Get over here and help me. What were you doing, little man? asked Rose Red. You stupid, nosy little goose, replied the dwarf. I wanted to split the tree in order to get little chips of wood for our kitchen fire. Those thick logs that greedy people like yourselves use are too hot and burn up all the little food we need. I had knocked the sharp wedge into the tree and all was going well but the knotty wood was so slippery that the wedge suddenly popped out, and the tree closed up so tight, so fast, that I had no time to jerk my beautiful white beard out of the way. So here I am, stuck fast, and I can't get away, and you silly, smooth-faced, milk-and-water girls just stand and laugh. Ugh, what wretched creatures you are. The children did all in their power, but they couldn't get the beard out. The tree clamped it much too firmly. He glared angrily at the girls with his fiery red eyes and screamed out, What are you standing there for? Get over here and help me. What were you doing, little? I will run and fetch somebody to help, said Rose Red. Crazy blockheads, snapped the dwarf. What's the good of calling anyone else? You're already two girls too many here. Can't you dummies think of a better idea than that? Don't be so impatient and in such a hurry, said Rose White. I promise I'll help you. Then taking her scissors out of her pocket, she cut off the tip of his beard. As soon as the dwarf felt himself free, he seized a bag full of gold which was hidden among the roots of the tree, lifted it up, and muttered aloud, Curse these rude, wretched girls, cutting off a piece of my splendid beard. With these words, he swung the bag over his back and disappeared without thanking them, or even as much as looking at the children again. Shortly after this, Rose White and Rose Red went out to catch some fish for dinner. As they approached the stream, they saw something which looked like an enormous grasshopper leaping toward the water, 
as if it were going to jump in. I will run and fetch somebody to help. They ran forward and recognized the dwarf. Where are you going to? asked Rose Red. You're surely not going to jump into the water. I'm not such a fool, screamed the dwarf. Don't you see that cursed fish is trying to drag me in? The little man had been sitting on the bank fishing when, unfortunately, the wind had entangled his beard in the fishing line. And when a big fish bit, the weak, feeble little creature had no strength to pull his beard out. The fish was stronger and dragged the dwarf toward him. The little man snatched and grabbed with all his might at every stick and leaf and blade of grass, but it didn't help him much. The fish flopped the little dwarf from side to side, and he was in great danger of being tugged down into the water. The girls came up just at the right moment, held him firm and tight, and did all they could to untangle his beard from the fishing line. But all in vain, nothing helped. Beard and line were in a hopeless muddle. Nothing remained but to produce the scissors and cut the beard, so another small part of it was sacrificed. They ran forward and recognized the dwarf. Where are you going to? asked Rose Red. You're surely not going to jump into the water. When the dwarf perceived what they were about to do, he yelled to them, Do you call that manners, you toadstool, to disfigure and ruin a fellow's face? It wasn't enough that you shortened my beard before, but now you have to cut off the best bit of it. I can't appear in front of my own people looking like this. I wish you'd been whirled away by a hurricane before you bothered my beard. Then the rude, ungrateful little person fetched a sack of pearls that lay among the weeds, and without saying a word of thanks, he dragged it away and disappeared behind a stone. It happened that soon after this, the mother sent the two girls to the town to buy needles, threads, laces, and ribbons. The road led over a bushy field where huge boulders of rock lay scattered here and there. While trudging along, they saw a big eagle hovering in the air, circling slowly above them, but always descending lower and lower, till at last it settled on a rock not far from them. Immediately afterward, they heard a sharp, piercing cry. When the dwarf perceived what they were about to do, they ran forward and saw with horror that the eagle had pounced on the rude, unfriendly dwarf and was about to carry him off. The tender-hearted children seized hold of the little person and struggled so long with the bird that at last he let go his prey. When the dwarf had recovered from the first shock, he screamed in a screeching voice, "'Couldn't you have treated me more carefully? "'You have torn my thin little coat all to shreds and rags. "'Useless, awkward hussies that you are!' Then he took a bag of green emeralds and red rubies and vanished under the rocks into the cave. The girls were accustomed to his ingratitude and rudeness, and they went on their way and did their business in town. On their way home, as the children were again passing the bushy field, they surprised the dwarf pouring out his precious stones onto a huge handkerchief, for he had thought no one would pass by so late in the evening. The red setting sun shone on the glittering stones, and they sparkled and gleamed so beautifully that the children stood still and gazed on them. They ran f What are you standing there gaping and staring for? screamed the dwarf and his ash-gray face became scarlet with rage and anger. After these angry words, he was about to stomp off when a sudden growl was heard, and a black bear trotted out of the wood. The dwarf jumped up in great fright, but he hadn't time to retreat to a place of safety, for the bear was already close to him. Then the naughty little person cried in terror, "'Dear Mr. Bear, spare my life! I'll give you all my treasure. Look at these beautiful precious stones lying there. Spare me!' What pleasures would you get from devouring a poor, feeble little fellow like me? You won't even feel me between your teeth. There, gobble down these two wicked girls. They will be a tender morsel for you, as fat as young rabbits. Swallow them, for heaven's sake. But the bear, paying no attention to these naughty words, gave the evil little creature one swat with his bear paw, and the wicked little person never moved again. The girls had run away, but the bear called after them, Rose white and rose red, don't be afraid. Wait, and I'll come with you. Then they recognized his voice and stood still. And when the bear was quite close to them, his fur suddenly fell off, and a beautiful man stood beside them, all dressed in gold. I am a king's son, he said. That evil little dwarf stole my treasure, then magically transformed me into a wild bear, compelled to roam about the woods till his death should set me free. Now he has gotten the punishment he deserved. 
Rose White married him, and Rose Red married his brother, and the great treasure the dwarf had collected in his cave they divided between them. For many years the old mother lived peacefully with her children, and she always kept the two rose trees with her. They stood in front of her window, and every year they bore the finest blooms in the kingdom, red and white roses. <laughs>